I'm really excited. Lots of history. So this place is very historic. There's 65 picturesque acres to look at 35 log cabins, farm animals, and history. There's 250,000 artifacts inside several different buildings. A restaurant and a gift shop and a place for events. The team's been asleep. He's up now. Watch it back. This is Camper's Parallel Park. Right here. Okay, so we fed the boy. Look at him. He's eating. Got the heat on in here for you, buddy. There is a price to this. We'll let you know what that is when we get up here. And um, it is, uh, we're in Clinton, Tennessee. Yeah. So it's, it's what, 10, 12 miles north of? Northwest, I guess, of Knoxville. Knoxville, yeah. yeah. So if, and it's right off 75. We've got a visitor here. Look at this. Look how pretty that blue is. Peacock. Hello. Beautiful. Uh -huh. Over here it says uh, entrance. Strutting. Up in the mountain block. Mounting horses. Used to make salt by boiling salt laden water at Saltville, Virginia. President Lincoln ordered this salt works destroyed during the Civil War. There's the hours, you can see. And got a little brochure here. We'll take that. When you're after you eat, you'll just go down the drawers down there and turn to your right. You can see there's got quite a few things in here in that gift area, don't they? Yeah. Very cool. All kinds of stuff. What do you think about that? This right here. You walk out the door. <laughs> Beautiful. The signs here says, please start museum tour this direction. But we wanted to show you over here. Um, way down there, they're putting in a little tiny home village and RV park. So I'm not sure when that'll be ready, but it's something you might want to check into. Mm -hmm. Let's visit here first. It's a Tom Cassidy house right here. Oh, yeah. 1920, 1989. A musician from Union County, Tennessee, living alone in this one room shack. He could almost touch the op opposing walls of his eight foot by eight foot home when he stretched out his arms. I would say, look at there, he got his stove and a radio. I guess he could play some music, maybe even his own music. That is a little shack. He said, Tom once said, I've got that little cot in there, a chair, a stove for heat, cooking, a frying pan, a bean pot, an old dresser, my fiddle, and a pistol. What more does a man need? So this is the uh, Appalachian Hall Museum up here. And there he is, Wind Shark Playhouse. Oh yeah. Tiny, isn't it? Yeah. There's something on the wall you can see look at that cute it's a little doll mm-hmm it's pictures she even had a little ironing board hey good guys I'm zoom in you can pause the video and hopefully you can read that oh picture of many friends the warm and happy independent focus Southern Appalachia That one. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. These are our people, world renowned, unknown, famous, infamous, interesting, diverse, different, but above all, they are a warm, colorful, and jolly lot. 
in love with our land, our mountains, and our culture. May their memories ever be preserved, not so much in reverence to them, but as a gift to us and the generations yet to come. Few people realize the incredible contributions that the American Indian made to our ancestors and everybody loves, even today. Look at this. Paint palettes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Indian artifacts and different things, folks. Uh, just so much to see in here. Indian trade items. The great Indian sunflower pot made and used by the Indians in this area in the 1500s as a grain storage vessel adorned on both front and back with the unusual floral paintings of a sunflower. Jean Powell found this under an uprooted tree near here. Contents and keepsakes from Jonas Jackson's grandson of old Asa Jackson who designed and built the infamous perpetual motion machine. We'll show you there in a second, but you can read that if you'd like to. These are things that they kept back from his. Well, wallet, several knives. Yeah, but here it is. Famous perpetual motion. But you see all the pieces. There's a story with this. So his perpetual motion machine, built in the mid-1800s to be used its own power and run forever. According to local legend, Asa kept his invention hidden in a cave during the Civil War, and he took it apart when it was unattended, so that if it were discovered, no one could understand how it worked. Well, it's taken apart for sure. Nobody knows how to get it back together. It says they said that Asa got the machine running that it ran for several days and moved for several weeks without any power. So interesting, isn't it? Look at that. I don't think they could ever get it back together again. Nobody knows how he put it together, so it's never ran again. Children of Appalachia. Oh, there's a Liberty Express. There's a little sock monkey. Look at those, the Mountain Folk doll family. I don't know about that. Huh. Marbles and the little shoes over there. More from the children of Appalachia. Let's see some of the toys they made. Look at this. I only remember two toys I ever had as a child growing up in the mountains. Of Mitchell County, Western North Carolina. This little tractor was one of them. That's a quote from David Bird. Southern Circus Train. Wow. There's Mac the Doll and Topsy Turvy. Very interesting. We'll just scan it here, let you guys see. There's the orange crate chair. Check this out. Yeah, Dr. Andy Osborne's medicine house. He, as he called it, built in Blackwater, Virginia, near the Tennessee line. It's tiny. Mm -hmm. And he would care for the people. Yes, although people walked for miles to see him at his medicine house, he traveled extensively by horseback to minister to those who were too sick to travel. Wow. Somebody had to buy him a suit to, for his burial. Hmm. Here's Elroy Acuff, the king of country music. There's his fiddle. That's the back side of it. Jim Russell. There's Chet Atkins. Oh yeah, Kaz Walker, famous. Mm -hmm. 
You know what he's famous for, don't you? He's discovering Dolly Parton. Here's the mountain banjo. And here is the jawbone fiddle. Check that out. It's uh, weird, isn't it? Here's the famous Carter family. And then, of course, the father of bluegrass music, Mr. Bill Monroe. Look, here's Grandpa Jones. And Grandpa Jones' shotguns right there. So if I read that right, all this is just wood, natural. And he added the eyes, and I guess drew on the eyebrows. And put some horse teeth in there it looks like here's Joe's meal it's the whittlers of Appalachia it's just amazing how they could do all this it was you know, the most popular pastime in the mountains yeah look at that whittled Boar. And look at all these animals. My dad used to whittle, and um, he did a croquet set. Very cool. Small miniature one. Dad did. Look at this. What is that? Look at Uncle, old Uncle Billy's, Browley's corn crib. Did he have a large family on a few acres? Hmm. <laughs> that is cool. And here's the different quilts. It's a star pinwheel quilt. You can see the names on Bachelor's Dream behind the beautiful chandelier there and the murder quilt. Wow. That's Lamar Alexander's second hand tricycle. And all this is about the American Revolution. You can see here, Civil War musket, repeatedly found with the skeleton of a soldier, that one on top up there. All right guys, check this out. And McDaniel Tooth in his office. Look at that. Look at the chair I had to sit in. Oh my goodness. It was adjustable and collapsible. And uh, death, funerals, and remembrances. Coffin making toolbox. Look at that. Oh, wow, that's there. Unused baby coffin. Sample coffin and suit. Well, that's a pretty cool story right there. The William H. Real Angel Crown. I'm telling you, you could spend hours in there, oh, can you? hours, yeah, easy. Yeah. We'll go back and see if the line's gone down a little bit for the... Grab lunch. some lunch, yeah. Uh -huh. So we decided to come on back to eat. Beef potato casserole, chicken noodle casserole. So Karen wanted to be right here by the fire, so we didn't take long. The food came right out. Right. So I got chicken and dumplings, and that came with cornbread. Mm -hmm. And I got good old six things cornbread. Hey guys, we met some friends of the channel here at the museum, Tony and Jeannie, and y'all live in Morristown. Morristown, yes, Morristown, Tennessee. Well, thanks for saying hi. Hello. <laughs> hey. Throw that cornbread right in there like that right there. I'm gonna try it. Mm. Mm. Chicken and dumplings are good. Is it good? Uh huh. They're hot. Mmm. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. Give you some of this. All right, we ready? Mm-hmm. I give that a a good score right there. Oh, me too. 
you like a good country cooking Appalachian country cooking yes those pinto beans and cornbread were delicious they call it southern cooking of Appalachia yep now on to the tour here I'm here to sacrifice and renewal oh yeah Tennessee Valley Authority Hmm. Norse Dam. That's a neat picture. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Nighttime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And lots of the families. And this is um, some of the workers the TVA, TVA hired to build the dam. Look at that construction on the dam. They worked night and day. Here's a photo of the one room schoolhouse in Oakdale. That's pretty neat. The older kids sit in the back and they are in the yeah. front. It's listed on the National Register of Historic Places by the U.S. Department of Interior. It is thought to be the smallest building in the country to have received this great honor. It was built 1800 on Clinch River near Liberty Hill in Granger County. In 1800s. 1800s. Well, check that out. And we can go in. Oh man, look at these big boards. Look at that. Old bed. Didn't have. Here's the old table. Mm -hmm. It says a small turbine ran a cotton gin on the Cherry Creek and the Sparta Cookville area. Wow. And then here's a jail, Karen. These two cells dated 1874. Each designed to hold four prisoners. See how tight it is? See, those aren't even dated, so you know they'd be tight. Oh my goodness. You'd have to walk sideways in between them. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you? Oh yeah. And what's this next building we're going in? The Display Barn. It houses one of the nation's largest collections of frontier and pioneer memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that is cool. Stone bank vault. From the bank of Madisonville. It's a stone dairy trough. This is a stone basin. This is a basin. And all the different tools. This is a log meat trough from a popular tree we used in pioneer times for storing and curing pork. I don't, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, it's a tower clock from Clinton Courthouse, six miles southwest museum built in 1892. Hmm. Here's the actual clock on the other side. You can see the mechanism. Oh, this small. looks like an old general store here, doesn't it? it says this was a Look at that. Got all the stuff back there. This is a band saw, 36 and a half feet long. A Coca Cola sign back there. Pure lard. I'm telling you, folks, there's so much stuff in here. It's amazing. That's why you can see that this is a Smithsonian affiliate. Yes. Because there's so much history here. Look at that beech nut. My dad chewed beech nut. Worked good for me whenever I got stung with a bee. <laughs> is this a post office? Looks like a post office. can see guys just tons and tons of stuff. It's like a leather shop right here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Wow. Repair shoes. And Look at all those saddles. Saddles. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Got watching folk art. Mm -hmm. 
good sound from up here. Look at that big saw blade. Cedar Creek Charlie. Everything he did, he did with this style. That's crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Put these dots, red dots on everything. So Charlie was an interesting dude. One of 11 children. 11 in Virginia. Hmm. You can see, here's his house. He painted it up. There he is. Trunk bought at auction in Greenville from the great-granddaughter of President Andrew Johnson and said to have come from the President's Greenville home, but no documentation. Hmm. Number nine is the People's Building houses an extensive exhibit on interesting character Harrison Mays, the coal miner who erected immense concrete crosses across the country. Also included are the Christie exhibit and James Bunch folk art exhibit. So, very interesting. Look, he wanted this one erected in China in the 1990s. You guys can read this if you want to pause it and read that more about Harrison Mays. Very, very interesting. The coal miner who waged a one-man crusade for God on the roadsides of America. Look and at all those. Yeah, and you can see that one right there. Erect this sign in Italy. 1990s. Prepare to meet God. Jesus is coming. God have helped me to get these sacred signs in 50 states, 82 nations, on the seven seas, all the big rivers and lakes on earth. With God's help, I hope to erect or have erected signs on the moon and nine planets by 2020. Oh my goodness. Very, very interesting guy, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is more about Harrison. The House of Many Crosses. Apparently this is his home he built. It's in the shape of a cross also. And here is his bicycle. Let's check that out. Says this bike is dedicated to outer space. I hope to ride it on the moon and many of the planets erecting sacred signs. Get right with God. Look at that. And there's his jacket and crosses all over it. This shows him putting some of the signs up. You can see in some of these photos. This is the James Bunch exhibit. James Bunch was born in 1916, far back in the Great Smoky Mountains of the Tennessee, North Carolina border. His father died before he was born, and his mother lost her mind when he was only two. He was raised by his grandpa, grandparents and started working in the logwoods and local sawmills when he was barely eight years old. He spent his life cutting and logging timber farming and a carpenter. I'm guessing he made all these? He started whittling with his pocket knife. Yeah. Over the years he created thousands of items. The okay. leather shop contains the complete leather working tools and equipment used by Hobart Haygood of Persia, Tennessee. This jug found in Gate City, Virginia reportedly came from the Tennessee Eastman plant in Kingsport. Oh my goodness. Can you read that? My dad retired from the yeah, Eastman. In the early 1920s. That general. Nice. Hey, good harness and saddle shop. That's what you were reading about, isn't it? Yeah. So interesting. Mark Twain family cabin. The family moved here from Possum Trot, Tennessee, once served as the home of Mark Twain's parents and some of their children. The famous writer was born some 
Five months after the family left Tennessee in 1835, the little corn cob adjacent to the cabin came from an isolated area in Kentucky near Jericho, Tennessee. So apparently, the story goes, he was, he was conceived in here. Yeah. This is the Bunch Smokehouse 16, General Bunch House. And, uh, oh, we had to really duck down to get in there. Now this was a big old house here. This said the Bunch House, is that what this was? Yes, General Bunch, when he was only eight years old, helped build this house. Yeah, this is a hen house and lot. Did you say it was Granny's? Uh-huh. Look at those there. Then there's the Wilson barn right here. Yeah. It's a blacksmith shop. This was the McClung house. Yeah, it was built. It was built a few miles southwest of Knoxville. It was built in the 1790s by the McClungs. Look at that little wagon up there. This is the Mark Monroe Pioneer Log Kitchen. It was later used as a smokehouse and meat house. This is a broom and rope house. It says broom corn was grown by almost every early family and made into round brooms consisting of bunches of broom straw tied to a stick. Put your head. Small door. We had a broom made at the Arts and Crafts community. We have in our home, don't we? Yes. Cox Corn Crib and Doc Randall's Old Medicine Show. Peels, Tonic, and Music. Remember that Andy Griffith yes, show? Yes, uh -huh. That's what it reminds me about of. About Tonic, yeah. Does it say anything special about it there? It just says it came from the old bunk Cox Place, two miles south of the museum. Okay. And it appears a corn crib. Mm -hmm. See it sitting up there? And this is a Daniel Boone cabin? Yes. So not his real one. A one-room dirt floor structure was used by 20th Century Fox as the frontier home of Daniel Boone in the TV series for CBS called Young Daniel Boone. Oh, okay. The cabin was actually built in the New River section of Anderson County in the early 1800s. And Sheep pen. Down there. Get some chicken. It is beautiful out in here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I bet in the fall this would be really neat. Oh, yeah. This is the Big Tater Valley Schoolhouse. And I guess you got an outhouse over there. And an outhouse over there. Yeah, girls there. Big Tater Valley Schoolhouse was moved from Tater Valley on Bull Run Creek between Union and Granger Counties and furnished in the manner of an early mountain school. Yeah, now this is uh, Irwin's Chapel Log Church. Let's go ahead and show you inside. And we got a peacock coming to greet us. Yeah, Look at him down there. Hello there. You used to people, aren't you? This was built about 1840 near the mountainous Madison County, North Carolina, and was no longer used as a meeting house. It was acquired by a local farmer. Yeah, take that up for light. And got the old hymnal here. Angels from the realms of glory, go tell it on the mountain. And Luke. says we were unable to determine the church's original name, so we call it Irwin's Chapel. Irwin's Chapel. Check 
the mail. Yeah, this is just the homestead house right here. You see, and then the loom house was right there. It was originally built in 1840. Okay, some age. Homestead smoke smokehouse and granary was originally owned by the Childers family of Powell Valley. You know them? No. That's your hometown, Powell Valley. Well, there was a lot of Childers, so I don't know. This authentic liquor still, typical of those found throughout Appalachia, was built by the notorious Popcorn Sutton. Everybody's heard of Popcorn. A moonshiner and a colorful person in the region. This is a big old sawmill, isn't it? Yeah. They do these uh, educational things for children's classes. I guess they can take a tour of the place. And Okay, this is the Hacker Martin Grist Mill, a water-powered corn and wheat mill originally located in the community of Boone's Creek, a few miles from Johnson City in northeast Tennessee. That's where I grew up, Boone's mm -hmm. Creek. But the building's not open to the public. You can no, we see can't why. get over there any closer. What was the name of it again? The Hacker Martin Grist Mill. The Hacker Martin Grist Mill. Probably not safe or something. No, it doesn't look safe. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, this is a extremely large barn. It's been supported by some other logs around the edges. Okay, you guys definitely need to come here. Yes, thanks for joining us here at the Museum of Appalachia in Clinton, Tennessee. So much history, good food, great place to come with uh -huh. your family nice or, gift shop mm -hmm. and they're building the rv and tiny homes place so yes and you can have events here mm -hmm. it was uh, 18 dollars each i mm -hmm. think to, to get in but so worth it it is worth it and our meal was around 13 dollars yeah. if you like uh, videos like this hit the like button let us know down below and we can always make more right yes and if you're not a part of our community we'd love for you to subscribe hit yeah. that subscribe button and join us yeah. for all our adventures until next time we're fridays forever bye bye everybody bye, everyone. well the question is what is old big t up to hey we're back <laughs>